I just started my eight week fat loss phase a couple of days ago and today I'm going to show you what I eat in a weekend and how I'm approaching my fat loss without tracking calories or without even weighing myself. Basically coconut oil, I use it as a mouthwash because the most amount of bacteria builds up overnight in our mouth and you cannot completely get rid of that just by brushing your teeth. So yes, I brush my teeth, but then also while I prepare my breakfast, use that. If you see me doing this type of motion, it's the coconut oil. I've been reading into Ayurveda, which is like the oldest health system originated like 5,000 years ago. Basically some natural strategies to optimize the way like you live your life. It suddenly got so dark outside, so we had to turn on the light, but basically this is my first meal of the day. I have two full eggs, two egg whites, and then some fruit, banana and apples with cinnamon, and that doesn't change. It doesn't change whether I'm trying to lose body fat, whether I'm trying to maintain my body composition, whether I'm trying to put on muscle or just focusing on health and performance. Quantities of the food may change. I might make some smarter options, but the bulk of my diet remains the same because I've developed habits that allow me to have a healthy diet long term. So this isn't a quick fix and those principles still remain and this is what I want to show you today, how you can alter some of your habits that allow you to change your body composition without doing any drastic quick fixes or fat diets or falling into the diet culture side of things where it's just not sustainable. I'm about to dig into this and I get so excited every single morning for my breakfast. One of the habits that I started doing recently in order to keep my hormones happy and balanced is eating breakfast within the first hour of waking up. And if you find that you're just not hungry, you don't have an appetite, there could be few reasons for that. Maybe you do have some underlying hormonal imbalances. Usually it would be down to high cortisol. And when the stress levels are super high in the morning, that will suppress your appetite. But another one could be habitual. If you are somebody that tends to eat quiet late into the night and you're eating close to your bedtime, you will find yourself not hungry when you wake up. I get that all the time. For example, if I go out for a big meal or I get a, a takeaway, which is quite close to when I'm going to sleep, I don't wake up hungry. I still have my breakfast because I know that it supports me and my energy levels and my health and it stabilizes my blood sugar, but I don't find myself having a big appetite. Whereas on like regular basis, I try to have my last meal about three hours before I go to bed. And that way I have like a fasting window of 11 hours or so. So when I wake up, my body is craving, craving that food. I also take some supplements in the morning, so I'm gonna take them now before I actually start eating and I'll show you what I'm currently taking. So we have probiotics for my good health. We're also taking ginseng and that's basically for my adrenal systems to help them work optimally. I'm somebody that's quite sensitive to stress and not only like physical stress that you would think of, but like psychological stress and allowing my mind to calm down. And I found taking, um, and I found taking this in the morning and in the night helping to regulate my adrenal system. I also take vitamin D3, especially being in Ireland and not really being exposed to sun. Sun is the main source of vitamin D. So it's so important for me to supplement it. But vitamin D is actually a hormone and a lot of people are super deficient in it. It also plays a role in the way that we absorb magnesium. So. That's the third supplement I take. And 
I do tend to take omega trees, but uh, it seems that I've run out and I haven't noticed. But my fourth morning supplement would be omega trees, and that's like a small supplement stack that I have each morning, and I pair that with my breakfast. The sun just makes everything better. I instantly stepped outside and my mood just skyrocketed. And as you can see, Eddie prefers to be carried instead of walked like other puppies or other dogs. Isn't that right? But he has this thing that he just needs to get used to being outdoors before he can start walking. So I carry him until we get to the end of the estate and then I put him down and he's usually fairly good, but we're not going to jinx it. <laughs> but so far he's just being carried. But one habit that I have changed in terms of like helping me to drop body fat is increase my step count goal. So I average around 10,000 steps a day and I have increased that by 2,000. So my minimum step count goal on daily basis is 12,000 steps, which works for me because essentially I just need to be doing more activity that I'm already doing. Steps is a handy way of increasing activity without putting too much stress on my body because if I was to rev up cardio that could be too much for me whereas steps are a low intensity form of exercise. I also try and time my walks around meal times so it helps with my digestion so now I tend to go out for uh, about half an hour walk after my breakfast and that helps me regulate my blood sugar levels it also helps me digest the food so that when i get home and get into work i'm feeling more focused and sharp this is the reality of ireland when i was leaving the house i was blinded by the sun and now we're feeling absolutely soaked but here's a proof that eddie actually likes being walked I just got back from the gym and I am about to make some lunch and I'm not going to lie I am absolutely not prepared which I know isn't ideal when you are starting a fat loss phase and you have no clue what you're going to eat but look we have been away the last two days and I'm back but lucky enough my mother has made um, some turkey mints with tomato sauce so I am going to improvise and I've been doing this for so long. Like I've been through so many fat loss phases, so many gaining phases, maintenance, focusing on health, that even in situations like when I don't have planned what to eat, I know what sort of principles to follow that will allow me to put a meal that is high in protein and is balanced and is going to keep me full for longer and support my fat loss goals. So, Whenever it comes to a situation where I'm like, damn, I don't really have anything to eat. When I was just starting out, would probably choose such a convenient option, like maybe ordering a takeaway or just having a simple sandwich and, you know, crack on and then wonder why I was hungry two hours later. But now I am going to, first of all, prioritize protein because I'm just after lifting weights for an hour and I was breaking down my muscles. So they need protein to recover, to grow bigger, to grow stronger. And also protein is so key, especially when you are dieting because you want to preserve as much muscle as possible. When you are eating below your maintenance, you know, when you're shredding body fat, it will also eat up into the muscle as well. And you don't want to lose your muscle. So protein first. So I'm going to be using that turkey mince here that's in tomato sauce. And then I am going to pair this with couscous. So this is something that I always have in the house because it is such an easy and quick carb source to prepare. All you do is pour hot water over it and it's ready in like three minutes. And then I'm also gonna use stir fry veg and sort of make like a stir fry. I don't know how it's going to turn out, okay? But here I'm having my carb source. I'm going to be adding in plenty of veggies from the stir fry mix and my protein source here. And then I also need a bit of fat, you know? It's really important that as females, as we diet, we don't go down on fats too low. This is a mistake I've made as well in the past because fats are the most calorie dense, okay? So it's so easy to cut back on them, which is fair enough, but our body requires fats. There's essential fatty acids that our bodies cannot make ourselves and we need to get them through food. So 
having sources of healthy fats such as avocado, nut, seeds, olive oil, oily fish is so important for the proper functioning of our hormones but also for things like focus, like memory, for satiety as well. So I'm definitely not going to be cutting down on them or I'm not going to be eliminating them. And the voila la la. <laughs> this meal is extremely random, but that's me. Sometimes I'm just like, what should I put together? And I end up throwing things together, and at times they turn out phenomenal, other times they don't. But I suppose I also want to give you an update on where I am with my fitness journey, with my goals, and obviously having to pull out of the half marathon. And I'm not really running because I'm still recovering from an injury. So my current goal is to drop some body fat, but I'm still really focused on my health and my performance. And I do really hope I can get back into running as soon as I can. Basically, my training split is four sessions, three to four sessions. I'm going to be transitioning to doing a new plan next week where it's a structured four day training plan for now. I still am on my three day plan, although I went in today to do my fourth session because my recovery is so well, I'm not running anymore. And then aiming to do swim in one to two days per week to keep up with my fitness levels and also to keep up with the hybrid style of training and switching it up from just like lifting weights. So that's where we currently are for gym sessions a week and then I'm going to be doing one to two swims as well. I'm really enjoying swimming. I'm also, I have such a type A personality and I get so competitive. Even sometimes I'd go into the pool to do an easy swim, a couple of laps and then go into sauna and then I'd be swimming along there. And the person beside me is, you know, doing their own thing. And in my head, I create competition. I'm like, that person is here to beat me. I need to keep up the pace and then I can absolutely tire myself out, which wasn't even the goal. But that's just me, I suppose it's, good in a way but also when I'm just going there for an easy swim and thinking that I need to be super competitive probably not great but that's where we are that's where we're going so definitely follow on along if you're interested to see where I am going to be in terms of the end of this dieting phase so we're just at the end of week one, I have seven weeks to go and how my training is going and my recovery as well because hopefully I can substitute the swimming sessions back running again because I do want to get back to it. I do eventually want to run the half marathon but I'm just going to take it nice and easy and make sure that I'm not running for the sake of hurting myself because exercise is supposed to add to my life and not take away from it and I'm not going to be rational <laughs> although you know obviously like my ego wants to push through it is time for a mid-afternoon snack so we got a little bit hungry i'm just gonna tie this up so basically for my mid-afternoon snack around between like three and four is usually when i get a little bit peckish i do normally tend to train around five-ish so this is also my pre-workout snack. I know I trained already, but it's still a little habitual and it's just a nice little thing to have in between the lunch and dinner. Basically, what it consists of is 0% fat-free Greek yogurt. I have around 200 grams of that, which I eyeball, but half of it is 250. So I try to be as accurate as possible, but basically, Say we go for 250 grams, because sometimes it can end up being 250 grams. That gets me 20, almost 23 grams of protein, which adds to my protein content. And I suppose like that is another thing that I am mindful of not tracking, but ensuring I get enough protein is that not only my three core meals are high in protein, but so is my snack as well. And I'm getting roughly 20 grams of protein from that. I don't know if you've ever eaten 
0% fat-free Greek yogurt on its own, but it, it does not taste good, okay? If you get the full fat, yes, amazing, absolutely love it. The fat-free one on its own, just not a bit of me. So what I do is I use these Women's Best flavor drops and these are in butter biscuit flavor, divine. Like you only need a tiny little amount. Literally, I had this bottle for embarrassingly too long. I add that into here and then honestly, ugh, just so much flavor. I was actually baking earlier, so I have a little bit of like granola as such. It's basically oats with some honey and peanut butter, so I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of that. Again, portion control is key when you're trying to lose body fat because things like granola, even homemade, like can quickly add up and even for a small portion. So like you can still absolutely enjoy whatever foods that you like. Well, you're gonna do whatever you want anyway, but I know <laughs> I'm gonna be enjoying all the foods that I love, but you know, kind of reducing portions. So I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of that on top and voila, I don't know, you can't really see. And then we're gonna have blueberries. So I'm just about to have dinner and I'm actually cooking dinner for my family and we're having Nando's inspired sunset burgers and I'm so excited for it. So we have everything here, the chicken breast, the peri peri Nando sauce, halloumi, burger sauce and burger buns and I'm going to pair that with a salad that I literally just prepared here because balance and we want to be getting our nutrients in as well and volume eating okay so here we have the finished products Nando's inspired burgers oh my god I can't wait to dig in they look absolutely divine if I do say so myself